Welcome back to World This Morning, which is Ad Khan and Hashmi, with a beautiful weather outside today in the Twin Cities. I don't know about other parts of the country, yeah. but well, we are having a great time over here. And okay, so we were going to talk about something important, remember? Yeah. This week, we are observing World Retina Week just to spread awareness about the retina related diseases, all sorts of eye diseases, how to live a life if you have any sort of visual impairment. And then also, we have some people from this very amazing PFFB Foundation over here in Pakistan who are helping people with any sort of visual impairment to lead their life in a normal exactly, way. Exactly, exactly. But before uh, before that, ladies and gentlemen, so I kind of spent a lot of time last night to actually learn uh, the pra, what retina actually does to us as well. So retina basically is, is a layer which protects the backside yeah. of your eye and it's at the backside. And then when your lens actually focus onto something, hmm. so the light is actually converted into neural signals sent to your brain, and that's how you see it. Oh, I learned it. Wow, that's well, amazing. Well, it's great. So this is someone and, did their homework. Yeah, and this is the best part I love about my job that we actually get to learn about things Absolutely. every day as well. But other than that, ladies and gentlemen, we know that how hard life can be if, God forbid, or unfortunately, you have some diseases which are related to your retina as well. You can lose your eyesight, and people can actually have these issues because of the fact that their parents had it or their grandparents had it, so it can be hereditary. Right. And then uh, a few of them are actually acquired as well. But uh, other than that, there are ways where we can actually protect our eyes, make them, uh, uh, you know, uh, I mean, we should actually ensure the health of our eyes as well, which we actually take them for granted as well. I've seen a lot of people who have actually been recommended by the doctors to wear spectacles. They don't do it because of the fact that they think that, you know, they do not have this habit. But please make sure uh, to stay healthy. And, and when we eyes. talk about staying healthy, we talk about keeping each and every organ of your body healthy. Absolutely. So I feel like we should definitely start introducing All right. Our so ladies and gentlemen, today with us, we have been joined by Chairman Pakistan Foundation, uh, fighting blind blindness as well. Ladies and gentlemen, he's none other than Mr. Abdullah Yusuf. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Sam. Also, the former FBR <laughs> yeah. chairman you are. <laughs> yeah. Ex yeah. FBR yes. Thank you very much for joining us. And these days, I don't know whether people are actually liking a lot of people in FBR or not. <laughs> but yes, thank you very much for joining us. It's wonderful to have you. Alongside Mr. Abdullah, ladies and gentlemen, we have been joined by Chief Coordinator PFFB. And this is not the first time that she's on the show. This is like second or the third time. She's none other than Rabi L. P. Zada, hello. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Pretty good. <laughs> yeah, and That's we can amazing. see that. Thank you very much for that amazing smile early in the morning. <laughs> and alongside Rabe, ladies and gentlemen, we've actually been joined by an ophthalmologist himself, and he's none other than Dr. Shakeb Anwar. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Wa alaikum salam. Thank you very much. Okay, so the first thing I would love to know is the, whether my definition of retina was correct or not. You are almost absolutely correct, but let me put in in a better yes. way. Go ahead, yes, please. Yeah. It's uh, just uh, a very short, in a very short way, eye is like a camera. Yep. Okay. And the front is the lens that yep. we see the black circle in the eye. Yep. And the film in the camera, which used to be, is represented by retina. Okay, that's right. So the image falls on that film, which is a very thin layer, and it, it itself contains many, many layers, micro layers inside. Okay. So a picture forms there, which is upside down, and a very small picture. Yeah. Then it is uh, transferred to the brain in the form of electric signals mm. yeah. and then brain deciphers it back into a picture, okay. turns it straight, so, magnifies it yeah. and builds it. So what you're trying to tell us is that the way we're looking right now is not the way the eye has actually seen it. Exactly. So it's upside down. And now the brain actually helps us in correcting exactly. it. Exactly. And it's a wow. very small picture. Okay. And brain builds it and brings it to the real size. And mm. it's in Magnifies real time it. as well. You know, just yeah. when we it's look at time. it, it's just there. So, so it's great speed exactly. of life. But other than that, so let's talk about uh, some of the diseases hmm. which are related to retina. I want uh, you to elaborate upon the diseases which are hereditary, which are related to retina. And then the man can acquire because yeah. he or she can be in accidents or there can be other problems as well. All right. So uh, retina being a very integral part of the eye and probably the most important because all the picture is formed here which is taken to the brain. So uh, talking of, of the diseases, we can simply divide it into two types of diseases. Yeah. One is the surgical type of diseases in which we need operations and then the medical types of diseases of the retina in which, which is treated by medication or some other means. Okay. Right? So surgical is very simple. It's because of usually some trauma or there are inbuilt weaknesses which ultimately at some time of 
uh, at some stage of the age right. hmm. leads to the tearing or hole formation or detachment of the retina from its original place. Oh, okay. And that leads to the malfunction of this layer. All right. So that needs surgery and that's a complicated process done by specialized people. Now the medical side, there are so many diseases either we carry inherently in our blood, yep. they are the hereditary eye diseases of the retina and there's so many of them. Okay. And then there are diseases which we acquire during our life because of certain blood borne infections or anything <coughs> or because of certain other extraneous factors or insults or injuries like like radiations and all that okay. which lead to damage to the retina and of course the malfunction of this layer. Okay. So one of the prototype, the two main diseases that we are here, one hereditary I would consider one disease hmm. which is prototype that is retinitis pigmentosa. Hmm. It's a disease which leads to uh, night blindness in and a it's very common as well it's, yeah. it's, it's quite common yeah. uh, it's the the rate is one in three to four thousand people okay. All right. and it is transmitted in two three ways one is sporadic that it can occur anytime 50 yeah. percent of the people they don't have a family history okay, okay. then it is also transferred in in a, in a dominant fashion in a recessive fashion and in mm -hmm. x-links they are technical terms but it has got grades and shades. Okay. In some people, it's very severe, and they, they go to blindness in early age, mid-20s or maybe up to 30s. Okay. And the, some people have a milder form of disease, and they live with a quite good vision up to 60 years of age. So it okay. has got shades and grades, okay. depending upon the genetic dose that the person gets. That's right? fair. If it gets All a right. bigger dose, so the disease is severe. If it gets a milder dose of those genes, the disease is mild. Right. So okay. this is one which is practically, uh, by medicine or surgery, practically it's supposed to be untreatable. Right. Okay. But in the newer techniques, now we are developing certain chips or artificial retina patches which are implanted in the eye. Okay. Wow. Now the work is being done all over, especially in America, and they are being planted. And they are good for those people who are, who are totally blind. Okay. And they have a crude vision with this. All mm -hmm. right. That's absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. And we will keep learning from you throughout the yeah. show, of course. That is why you're here. But moving on to you, Rabil, you very brave and courageous girl, first of all. This is the first time I'm meeting you. And your energy, your vibe is absolutely contagious. It's so positive. So for all the viewers out there who don't know about you, you uh, unfortunately met an accident which uh, made you lose your vision. But that did not change your lifestyle, that did not change your approach <coughs> towards anything. Tell us all about it, how you're living with it and how you're helping other people who are visually impaired to live with a positive attitude. Uh, actually, I'm not blind by birth. In yeah. the age of 12, I got an accident and I lost my vision. Okay. But I decided not to give up. Wow. Hmm. And I want to do something that uh, nothing is impossible in this world. Absolutely. So I have learned my journey and... Uh, uh, to c collaborate with Pakistan Foundation Fighting Blindness. I have done masters in English literature. Wow. And uh, I'm a first visually challenged girl in Multan who did masters in English and move as a personality groomer on international level. That and is amazing. Uh, before PTV Home made whole life journey on myself. Hmm. And the wish name is Rabel and it is available on YouTube. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. And uh, I'm also first blind teacher in Bacon House School System. Wow. And I'm a first visually challenged teacher who made visually, uh, uh, who made uh, uh, lessons, mm -hmm. video lessons okay. for sighted peoples. Wow. wow. And uh, I'm a karate champion also. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's nice. <laughs> is there anything you left behind? <laughs> but that's amazing. Mashallah, mashallah. You're absolutely a full package over here. <laughs> I'm a member of International Lions Club and I'm a first side ambassador from Pakistan and I'm a chairman of Plistic Caesar 5 wow. and 1. Wow. So I mean, proud that to hear that because that, that's quite a lot of job, man. Actually, There's no stopping you. <laughs> actually, I want to uh, tell you something that there are two types of blind people in this world. Okay. One, those who are blind by birth. Mm. And secondly, those who develop visual impairments later in their journey. Yeah. Exactly. The person who are by birth blind to be seen more adaptive towards their conditions. Yeah. Okay. And they are using masters in Braille. Mm. But mm. unfortunately, the person who are develop visual impairment later in their journey, yeah. they feel difficulty yeah. and they have little time to cope with it. Right. Exactly. And it's very difficult and 
some of them face swell depression mm. and then our organization pakistan yes. foundation fighting blindness try to grown up okay. to build their confidence and we have provided our services like audio world we have academic course fifth till masters and further education we have ebook services like chartered accountant wow. css llb wow. psychiatrist and yeah. all and other thing all right exactly. rabil that's amazing but that is actually <laughs> what i was going to ask mr abdullah over here <laughs> so right pffp of course is doing an amazing job and like rabil mentioned i mean you are imparting education of conventional sort up up till masters right and then you're also giving vocational training to the people who are visually impaired so they can actually have an equal life in the society tell us about the response that you've been getting the people that are enrolled with you and share with us some success stories please thank you actually uh, as rabel has just mentioned we are this pakistan foundation fighting blindness mm. is basically an ngo which is meant to provide service right to the blind people all, right. all over the country wow and uh, we actually if we look back in history it was in 1988 mm. that uh, <clears throat> the old friend of mine uh, zaid khalid who was also a chartered accountant he actually started with the blindness mm. and that is how then he decided to get this organization or put up this organization wow. for the blind people and since then of course it is carried on mm. and i happened to be with him as the member of the body but then of course unfortunately uh, he passed away and then i have carried on to wow. provide the required services wow. because the ngos you know what you have to do mm. first is that you've got to have some money to run it of course mm -hmm. of course that has to be then managed and you've got to you know raise the funds which mashallah we actually do uh, every year and actually are continuing uh, managing the whole affairs mm. but now what we are basically trying to do is that all the people over the country now first we have to see whatever we can do to educate them mm. then we have to also try to give them that specialization a of skill set skill sets mm. yeah. you know of various kind of jobs right so that you are able to get the jobs because mm. that also is very important absolutely yeah. so then we have to try to also facilitate them for getting the jobs all right and that also is an issue which is in fact taken up with the government also that you have to provide certain percentage of mm. employment for the blind people exactly. right. and that also is something which is actually being managed mm. and this is how we are now uh, ending up with um, a number of people mm. who have actually gone through this process mm. and they are now running their own um, hmm. you know businesses or yeah. business or job yeah. or whatever that's amazing and that is really really i think uh, an achievement i it would is. say and we are continuing with it and um, i am um, especially grateful to rabel because yeah. she is really our uh, yeah real person wow. who is uh, managing yeah. <laughs> this whole affair this is definitely she's the poster child of your well. organization for you yeah. actually yeah but very quickly sir this one more thing which i wanted to ask and uh, since you've taken up so many challenges even with the government there is one more thing which we have felt always and me and chiza we've always discussed it on the show yeah. that pakistan actually lacks in developing infrastructure for people with disabilities mm -hmm. and that has been a major problem for a lot of people even people who are actually wheelchair bound people who cannot really see people who cannot talk they they do not have access to these offices and they do not have people who can attend to these people mm. as well who are specially able have you done anything in this respect yeah certainly we have our office okay and we have facilities all over the country okay. recreated for this purpose wow so they can then go and they can then get themselves 
you know, uh, treated, to, yeah. a, uh, activated, uh, because this is something which is a requirement, which okay. has to be done. Exactly. Definitely. And uh, mashallah, we are uh, doing it. And Rabel, can you explain a bit more in detail yeah. her uh, actual position? Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, we are uh, working for visually person, uh, visually challenged person from last 30 years, mm -hmm. and uh, we are providing education, information technology, IT centers, wow. and almost we have established more than 15 IT labs all over the country. Oh wow! Brilliant. And uh, in <coughs> 2016, we have started uh, some new programs like personality grooming, where that uh, which is top, uh, covered topics are personal hygiene, dressing technique table manners, postures wow. and gestures wow. and how to build your confidence. And it's great and I guess yeah. that you know for all of those parents who are actually out there that you really need to uh, go and check the PFFB as well because yeah. of the fact that I believe that they're actually doing mm -hmm. a lot of work. Definitely. For all of those people imagine that you know uh, God forbid if you have a son or a daughter who cannot really see from a very younger age they will have difficulty in probably going to the washroom or you know dressing themselves or doing normal house chores and if there are these kind of services available uh, all i'm going to say is i'm very proud of this yes, foundation absolutely. and thank you very much for helping blind people as well but very quickly because we're only left with the last two three minutes so i want to move on to dr sub over here so dr sub uh, you know for all of those people who are born normal but then eventually they develop these diseases how can they actually protect themselves in the first place and then, God forbid, if it is on an increase because of the fact of the that there's blood sugar level is high, hypertension, what do you think that they can do while they're at home? Because you have to act promptly. Uh, well, the most important disease which which is which is of concern globally is yep. is because of the diabetes, okay. and it is called diabetic retinopathy, right? And uh, th there's alarming figures actually that. People by 2030, they are going to be about 399 million hmm. partially or Completely. substantially blinded by this disease. Oh. Right? So now we see that diabetes is of two types. It's, a, it's a, from the childhood and later. Later on, right? it, yes. So, so both types. So what they can do for themselves is the diabetics. Hmm. I would advise and I would suggest that the physicians who are treating diabetes, whether in the early pediatric age or later on, they yeah. must refer their patients during treatment to the okay. ophthalmologist okay. so that they can have a screening of their retina. Exactly. Any person who reports first for diabetes must get a screening. Okay. Any child with diabetes who is 12 years or above in puberty must get screening. Okay. Any diabetic adult who has five years or more of diabetes standing must get screening of their retina okay. for diabetic retinopathy right. because early intervention in the disease because what happens in diabetes in a very uh, simple words that there are bleedings on the retina okay the blood vessels are damaged and that leads to a permanent damage to the vision. Exactly. so if you timely uh, intervene and you treat them the quality of life improves and goes a long way. Exactly. So there are different type of medications for them. There are laser treatments and there are alternative treatments. Whatever the eye surgeon or ophthalmologist feels, that can be instituted in time. Amazing. Wow. That's very great as well. And uh, just very quickly, so you mentioned that there that there has been an advancement in technology and that the that the uh, IT professionals have actually developed a chip. Uh, for the retina to replace the retina and that can give you the sight back as well. Yeah. How is that uh, possible for people living in Pakistan and how much do you think roughly it's going to cost? Yeah. It's, uh, I will name it, it's a small chip which is called Argus 2 by the Argus name of II. Argus 2 is the one okay. which FD has approved to be used in the human beings. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this chip is, it's presently, it's, uh, I don't know the exact price, okay. but it is in millions of dollars. Okay. Oh, wow. And it is, it's, it, at present, it's not commercially available. Okay. It's still limited and mm. it's being done in certain centers. It's being tried on human beings okay. only in certain prescribed centers of America. Okay. But still, there's but, hope, right? Yeah, yeah, there's a hope. There's a hope. They're moving on. Yeah, They're moving. But there will be a day, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. A, you know, one important thing is that sure. there is this international body the Retina mm. International. Okay. And PFFB is also, a, you know, Associated. member okay. a member of that body, because at that international level, 
what they are trying to do is to do whatever research is required for this problem yeah. and then try and come up with whatever you know solutions, solutions possible yeah. hmm. uh, uh, like this IT thing he has just hmm. mentioned hmm. is something that has been looked at globally amazing and that is what will help us okay so well that's, that's great so and <laughs> best of luck to PFFV as well and thank you very much sir for actually making us aware about all of these different mm. uh, problems and how to actually overcome that as well. Thank you very much, Rabel. Thank you very okay. much, Abdullah Saab. Thank you very much, Dr. Saab as well. And for everybody who's out there, uh, I believe that it's a good news. And both the segments, I loved it today. What about you? I know, same here, actually. So towards the end, ladies and gentlemen, if there's any damage that you need to report or if there's anything you need to help people with in terms of the earthquake that happened yesterday, exactly. please reach out very quickly to the concerned authorities so that maybe you can be a part in, uh, you know, improving or saving any damage from happening. Exactly. So right, just on our, on our Facebook page with the name of? Well, this morning. On Twitter. Well, this morning without G. YouTube and Daily Motion. Well, well, this morning, well, this morning. And the repeat you can catch at. Five past 7 p.m. tonight. Till the next time, one, two, three. Good, Good morning. morning.